everybody and welcome to episode 113 of the iRockNets podcast. My name is Corey Eichelberger and I go by iRockNets everywhere on the internet and iRock is just Corey spelled backwards. I just took a picture of the snow outside so I put it in here so you can all see exactly what we're dealing here with here in Minnesota. It's probably about two or three feet deep um, shoveled up around my driveway so I took a little picture right out the window through the screen so it's not great but um, someone said to me, how can you live with all that snow? And, you know, I've lived in the Midwest my whole life, in the upper Midwest my whole life. So, um, I kind of relish the snow. I, I think it's really pretty. I like being out in it. Um, I feel like if I find no joy in the snow, then I will have less joy, but I'll still have snow, Right. So there's your positive uh, affirmation <laughs> for the beginning of the week. You know, it's still going to be here. And so I've been walking outside. I walked yesterday really quick before we had to leave um, to go out to dinner and a movie. Uh, we went and saw a man called Otto last night with Tom Hanks. It's based on the book A Man Called Ove um, by Frederick Brockman. It was... It was lovely. If you've read the book, you know that he's a sad, grumpy, very um, turning inward old man whose wife has passed. Um, and he just doesn't want to live without her. And he's the neighborhood grump and takes care of their street and goes on his rounds every morning to check and make sure everything's done properly. And Tom Hanks does a nice job. He does not fit the image of the original Uwe in the book. <clears throat> at all to me and maybe that's just because what I know of Tom Hanks but it we had not been to a movie in forever and so I just said um, maybe this is something that we would want to go see so we went and there weren't a ton of people in it's a very small theater we go out here um, west of town and yeah it, it was lovely so we went out to dinner first early we went to early dinner we're, we're those we're those folks both nights uh, this weekend, Friday and Saturday, we went out to dinner at like 5.30 <laughs> instead of 6.30, which is what we kind of used to do. Um, I want to give you a little update on my gluten-free journey. Um, I'm doing really well with it. I have already um, lost some weight and am feeling a little bit better. I am still having significant tummy upset. Um, so I went and saw my gastroenterologist on Thursday and of course she gave me the recommended line of, you know, no dairy, no fiber in raw fruits and vegetables, um, start drinking fiber every morning, which I can barely stomach drinking that citrusil orange. Um, so I'm going to get a different one, try a different one. Um, and then she said, you know, Try taking Prilosec twice a week, which is just um, Meprazole um, for upset tummy. You can stick, stay with the Imodium. <clears throat> anyway, and then she said, call me in two weeks if it's not better. Well, I literally have been doing all that for five weeks, right? Like I've had this <laughs> for five weeks. So when I did a two stool cultures, um, we sent those in and uh, they came back negative for infection. But I know from my history with C. diff that those can come back negative and you can still have C. diff. You can still have an infection. Um, the bacteria sometimes doesn't show up or it needs to grow. Sometimes it takes a blood test for H. pylori or a biopsy. And she said, in two weeks, we'll do a colonoscopy. Well, I've had 
six colonoscopies in the last 10 years, like, and we never find too much. And I really don't want to go through that. Um, it's not pleasant, the prep, and it's expensive, right? And I don't know. So I asked the nurse, I said, is there any way that you could ask the doctor if she will just treat me with the antibiotic that she treated me with last time after we did the colonoscopy and the endoscopy? Because I took Zyfaxin, which is super expensive, and I got better. And I just thought, you got to advocate for yourself here. I don't want to wait another two weeks. I have a trip coming up. I'm really excited about going on and I don't want to be sick. And the nurse got back to me and she said, yes. So although my cultures came back negative, she's going to treat me as if I have, because this is the same thing I had a year and a half ago in August when I laid in the chair for five weeks and drank ginger ale and crackers. And then we did a colonoscopy and, and then she gave me the Zyfaxin. So then the, the drugstore called and said, this is a thousand dollars. Um, we don't want to order it in if you're not going to pay for it. And do you want to go online and see if you can get help with paying for some of that? And we have good insurance, but I said, sure, I'll go online. So I went online and I found a couple of Zyfaxin.com because it's a, there's no generic for this antibiotic. Um, so that's why it's so pricey still, but I'm having my shoulder replaced in June. So we will meet our deductible this year, no matter what. And I, I know that that puts it on the insurance, but I just said, yeah, I want you to order it in. I, I want to feel better. I want to see if it works before I have to jump through two major procedures. I don't know. I had a, a friend's wife get her colon perforated during a, a routine colonoscopy this fall. And so now I'm, you know, I keep thinking about that. Like how many do you have to have before something goes wrong? And so anyway, um, she thought that since I had been on an antibiotic with my hip replacement, that there was definitely a possibility that I had picked up something like C. diff or whatever. So that's my update on that. Um, but I wanted to share with you a quote that I have taped up in my bathroom right now, and I have it on my phone because for a long time, I have wanted to lose some weight, um, mostly because it makes my knees and my feet not hurt so much when I want to walk um, and I have put on quite a bit on my lower half I know to a lot of you someone said you know you don't but my face is a little fuller doesn't bother me it's not aesthetic for me at all I'm fairly happy but I have two knee replacements I have a bad foot I have a hip replacement now and so my walking with the extra weight on really hurts and I get really sore so the quote that I saw was, is it food or is it entertainment? And it really resonated with me because I eat a lot for entertainment, not because I'm just trying to fill my body with healthy food to survive, right? Like we eat well, meat, vegetables, you know, salads, but I eat a lot for entertainment. Like I just go to the refrigerator or I will eat a snack or candy or we'll go out to eat and I'll eat for entertainment when we're out to eat. I eat to um, have a pleasing experience. So I'll eat the bread bowl, <laughs> you know, that they bring to the table. Uh, I'll eat, we'll ha I'll have an appetizer or whatever it is. Um, and so I've been just like, really resonating with that thought. Is it food, Corey? Are you eating food right now? Or are you making the choice to eat for entertainment, which is a completely different beast, right? And I, I think I eat for entertainment most of my meals. Like I look at it as it is a, an, a, an a joyful adventure into something that's going to make my taste buds, right? And there's all a part of that in, in just healthy food, but boy, it flipped a little switch in my brain about everything I eat after the dinner hour <laughs> when I'm snacking on chocolate chips or peanut M&Ms or, you know, licorice or whatever it is. So I, it has really made it. And I, so I just thought I would share that with all of you. Um, I am not a proponent of everyone needs to be rail thin at all. 
I am a very muscular human being. I did gymnastics and worked on weights and, you know, I'm never, I don't ever want to be emaciated thin, but I do want my body to last me longer. And I know I probably have future surgeries in front of me like my mother. And so going into those situations, I want to be able to move and recover quickly and be healthy. So I just thought, okay, I'm gonna share those things. I had them at the top of my list <laughs> this week. You will have noticed that I changed the intro a little bit this week and I added some pattern features because I'm having a pattern sale. So I'm gonna share that right up front here. Uh, if you were on my newsletter list, you would have already gotten the coupon codes in your email, which makes it a little easier for you to just copy and paste them and use them either on Ravelry or on my website. But if you are not on my newsletter list, which you should be on my um, web page, you just put your email in and your first name and you get a free pattern for doing that. And so you get a copy of a cowl pattern. Um, and then I only send out an email when I'm having a sale or I have a new pattern out. So it, I don't have a weekly email or anything like that. Um, but the uh, pattern sale right now for the top five patterns that you saw at the beginning of the podcast, the code is top five and you get 40% off those five patterns. So you can choose to buy one or all of them. And that just supports me. So sometimes some of you say, thank you so much for the podcast. And it, one of the nicest ways that you can support me is by buying a pattern and just, I get a little ding <laughs> when I sell a pattern and it doesn't happen all that often. So I look at them all. I'm really, and I look at the names of the people because I get your little Ravelry ID if you're buying it there for who bought it. And I get like, thank you um, for supporting the podcast because I do have shipping fees and prize fees and it, this takes time and energy and I don't want to ever make this a paid for program or anything like that. Um, so you can always buy a pattern. So even if you don't plan to ever knit it, but you could gift a pattern to a friend, um, but top five for my top five patterns, you get 40% off. We are having the sock knit along as well right now. And so I have a lot of sock patterns for you to choose from. So you can use the pairs of socks collection, which has four fingering weight patterns, which are always discounted on Ravelry and four uh, DK weight patterns and those that set is discounted and if you go to the set page which is on the pattern page I've showed it before and you look there's it'll tell you what the code is to get those discounted so sometimes that's a bigger discount code than what I'm providing to the rest of the world just so that you know but my my um, sock patterns right now are on sale for 25% off so the pairs of socks the Shanana Friends Socks, which is uh, the pattern from the Minnesota 52 book. And some of you have that pattern already, so you could certainly knit those up. And you do not have to do the corrugated ribbing at the toes and the heels and the cuff. You can just do the easy cabled pattern, which is not really a cable stitch, it's just a twisted stitch. And those are really pretty socks and super simple if you don't do the heels, toes, and cuffs. So the if you already own the Shanana Friends socks pattern because you own the Minnesota 52 book, um, then I have the Up North Cabin socks, which, are, which is also part of my most popular pattern, top five. So use top five for the Up North Cabin socks because that makes them 40% off. Whereas if you use the code knit along, you get 25% off the socks. Um, and that's for everybody participating in the knit along. I also have my Mr. Tom's Field socks um, as well. So you have, I think, 12, 12 pairs of socks to choose from um, that are out there for all of you. I have a sock bundle on Ravelry, so you can look at all the socks and you could just go dump all my sock patterns in your cart. Um, the Up North Cabin Field, uh, Up North Cabin Socks has, has, is the socks that has all the, the toe options. So if you have wanted to try a different toe, an easier toe, a toe that you don't have to Kitchener, there are nine different toes in that pattern. So there's, uh, you know, a star toe and an asymmetrical toe. Um, so there, there are all kinds of toe patterns in that sock pattern. So you, you get them all extra and there are pictures of each one and what they look like and how you work them. 
So if you want to take a look at that, then that would be an option for you. But then um, through the, and the knit along goes through March 27th, that will be the podcast day. So that's why I chose it. Um, Cause I will give away all the prizes and I have put pictures in, but I will put a picture in here of all the prizes. And I have tons of yarn prizes, really good yarn prizes for the sock knit along. And I will also draw pattern um, each week, every two weeks off of Instagram and the Ravelry group for people who are just participating by commenting or making comments in the group or who are posting um, in progress shots of their knitting and that kind of thing. And so um, they will, I will be giving away uh, prizes every two weeks throughout the whole knit along. Um, so 25% off the sock pattern. If you have socks you want to knit, it's just any one of my socks and you can enter that in any other knit along you want to enter it in. So I know that there's always a self striping sock knit along going out there. The grocery girls have a sock thing all year, every year, uh, several people, um, the crazy sock lady, uh, you know, lots of people having sock knit along. So if you just pick one of my patterns, then you can, you could put it in both places. Um, and then I put all my patterns on sale through the end of this month. So any of my patterns, can you tell that I'm trying to sell some patterns, you guys? <laughs> I need to do some pattern sales. I did not write very many patterns last year and I really need to um, do some pattern sales so I can pay all my yearly bills <laughs> um, for my business. So I have some different subscriptions and apps that I use to run my business and I have to pay for those. And so, um, I just need to sell some patterns. Uh, my pattern coupon code is winter and you get 20% off any of my patterns that you put in my cart, in your cart, W-I-N-T-E-R for winter. And that goes through the end of the month. So the top five and the all patterns go through the end of this month. So you have two weeks about to use that. The sock pattern sale goes all the way through March and you can use that for any of the sock patterns during the knit along. And most of you can knit DK weight socks, even if you're a slow knitter in a, you know, a fairly quick amount of time. So that would be an option for all of you. So I just wanted to share all that. Then uh, my friend um, who I've shared before um, is going through a cancer journey, battle, uh, um, illness, and it's mysableyarns.com. And she uh, has put up all the rest of her yarn in her website. And those are all 40% off right now with coupon code SALE40. And like I've told you before, she's trying to get rid of all of her stash. And she has finished projects. Um, she's got some things she's knit that she's trying to um, sell. And so I just wanna put that out there. But I also did a stash toss. I tossed my stash last week. Uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. I, I've wanted to do it all fall. I was gonna do it when I had my hip replaced and I just didn't, I wasn't motivated. I didn't get it done. And so I went through my entire stash. I took everything out. I didn't pile it on the living room floor, but a lot of my sweaters quantities are in two gallon Ziploc bags. So I pulled the boxes out of the closet and I went through and I made sure every single sweaters quantity was on Ravelry because that's part of my issue with buying new yarn is that I don't always remember some of what I have. And so then I, I look in Ravelry and I say, I need five skeins of DK weight. Well, if I don't have it in there, I can't see it. So I wanted to make sure that all my stash was on Ravelry. And in each box, I found items that were not on Ravelry, but I also found some things that I've used up. And so I needed to kind of clear those out. Once I got the big boxes done, Ross would come to the door and he'd say, how's it going? I'm like, good, I think I'm almost done. And then the next day I'd work on it most of the afternoon and he'd come and he'd say, how's it going? And I'd say, good, I think I'm almost done. And then on day three, I finally finished up the main closet and going through. And those I have in clear Sterilite shoe boxes and they're in kind of an alphabetical order in there. Um, by the name of the yarn. And a lot of times I have patterns in with it. But while I was doing that, I found quite a few things that I'm not going to knit. And so I put them in my will trade or sell section on my Ravelry account. And so if you go to my stash and will trade or sell, you will see that I have probably six or seven sweaters quantities of different 
yarns, most of them with patterns um, that I am not going to use. And so they are probably for sale for about 50% off of what I paid for them. There's a beautiful Dragonfly Fibers kit with a blue gradient with gray yarn. That's just lovely. That would make a beautiful striped sweater or cardigan. Um, I have two, um, I have a cotton and linen blend sweater. It's fingering weight. It's really pretty. It's like a, a gold color and I just don't think I'm going to knit a fingering weight linen sweater, but that comes with the pattern included because I have patterns for these things, um, that booklets. So I can just shove those at you, but that is not what you'd have to make with it. You could certainly make, um, that linen top that I love so much, my mod, that would be, um, and then I had a really beautiful goldy dress sweater that's kind of shimmery and it's a cardigan. It's very pretty and I'm not going to knit that either, I don't think. Um, I don't know, it's just not speaking to me. And I, I have, you know, 60 sweaters quantities of yarn to knit. And so I just thought these are the ones that are not sparking joy right now. So put them in a bin, set them aside and go ahead and um then i have eight skeins of cascade yarns cloud it's an Aran weight it's really pretty i would say it's just lighter than this color and it just isn't the orange that i love and it was quite expensive i think i, I spent well over a hundred dollars for it so that is out there and that um was going to be either the harrowsmith shawl or the idlewood sweater and um I bought it a number of years ago. The colorway is called Cinnamon. Um, it's really pretty. So that's out there if someone might be interested. From Cascade Yarn Sierra, but I think that that's sold. And that is a cotton wool blend. And a lady already got in touch with me. And she just hasn't gotten back to me. So I'm, I think it's sold. But anyway. What am I wearing this week? This is my Ursa sweater by Jacqueline Seaslack. Um, I'm going to try to stand up a little bit. It has this V here, and it's a shorty sweater. And then I have a long striped tunic you guys should see me today my pants are this color <laughs> and then I have shoes <laughs> this color uh we did go to church this morning and I was like I've never worn this before and I'm not really sure that it goes but I'm gonna try it <laughs> and I have a coat this color and I walked out <laughs> and I looked like a walking cinnamon stick I don't know <laughs> anyway um so the top comes to my waist and then I have a tunic coming out and it's just this Really nice um, feature here, and then it angles out underneath. Um, it worked up really quickly. It's an Aran weight yarn. I use my Ella Ray Chunky. I noticed this morning, I've worn this a couple times, and I did not notice that my sleeves are a little short. Um, so I may take off, bind off, and add some ribbing. It just surprised me that it has this nice detail that runs all the way under. Um, so I don't know, I'm, I might think about that. But anyway, that's what I have on today. I'm a little warm. I might have to crack the window because I have my lights on for the podcast. I just looked at the thermometer on the wall and it's 75 degrees in here. We are having a very sunny day and the back of my house is windows. And so I was like, oh, okay, that's why. Because the ther thermostat's only set at 70, but um, I cracked the window. <laughs> It's 38 degrees outside today, so it's balmy for us. And um, yeah, I just was like, no wonder you're feeling so warm in here. So I had to get up and, and do All right, that. let's do the sweater of the week this week. This is the Diagonal Kimono. It is by Carol Pappen, and it was a project in my whips forever. And I got help from Annette. I don't know if Annette watches the podcast, but Annette is a friend. Um, who is also a sample and um, test knitter for people. And um, I had knit the back and it, it had been in this box for a long time. And I would take it out every year and say, oh, I'm going to finish that up. And then I don't know why I just wouldn't get on it. So I asked Annette if she would do the fronts for me because they had these pockets and I didn't want, I just didn't want to deal with it. I was designing a lot in the last five years and I just... I wanted the coat, but I didn't want to put in the time. And I think part of it is because it was done in this rustic um, Jameson's. Um, it is knit in like a DK weight um, gauge. 
It is an adult cuffed sleeve, drop sleeve, uh, oversized pockets, positive ease, worked flap. It's a written pattern. Um, and then the band that goes up and around, which is in garter. And I think that's another reason you guys know that I just can't abide garter stitch. It's so boring to me. It, it, I mean, just so boring. I, I need something to do in my knitting or I just get, I just get kind of bored. So anyway, um, Annette helped me finish and this was a checkerboard. The, the edging was supposed to be checks and it just, I mean, I like to mix patterns. Obviously we got a whole lot of color going on today, right? Like I've got stripes and chevrons and color blocks. When I sat down, I was like, maybe you should do a different shawl this week. And then I didn't want to redress the mannequin. And I was like, whatever, people know me, they're going to get it. But this is just a lovely jacket. It's really, really warm. You can wear it, you know, year round as your jacket. It's a, a lovely, and you could definitely use scrap yarn for this. You would not have to find follow the, as a matter of fact, I think there's a project out there where someone did it kind of in a solid. Um, but yeah, it's just a big cardigan kind of coat jacket um, with these um, pockets put in it. It is all done in garter stitch and there were a thousand ends to weave in. I don't mind weaving in ends, but you know, this is a ton of stripes and, and it really hard to carry them between one and the next because they're so far apart. So it, I'm just so glad that it's been off the needles for a while. I've worn it um, a number of times. I really do like it um, and I'm glad that it's done. It did take a lot of Jameson wool, but I had a lot left over. So I, bu I bought the kit to match the colors that were in the original pattern. And it came out in January of 2001. So I don't know when I bought it but I had the original pattern book for this. It came out in Jameson Shetland knitting book and I have that book. So um, that's why I had made the projects, okay? And then our shawl of the week is called Pete on Point and it's by Nancy Whitman. And if you are an art aficionado, you will know that there is a Dutch painter named Pete Mondrian, and this is his style. And so it is color blocks. Again, this is a garter stitch sections of using different yarns. I used Cascade um, wool uh, in it's a fingering weight. Um, it calls for Tosh Merino light, but that I used a wooly wool. This is, came out in October of 2014. It's modular. Um, I will show you what it looks like all laid out flat so you can kind of see. So you can do whatever colors you want with just black in between. So it's kind of like a log cabin blanket where you just pick up and continue to knit. But it turned out to be a small triangle, not super long tails. Kind of like what we used to knit back in the 14s, <laughs> um, which are not as wearable. So I fixed it by making it a poncho or a throw over piece by putting two orange buttons and stitching that shut. So I put my two buttons there and now I just can throw it over my shoulders. It stays on completely. It does not move, especially because it has that wooly wool, which really sticks to anything you're wearing. And then it doesn't slide around like a superwash merino wool. If one of your problems with wearing shawls I'm sorry, my glasses are loose and I need, I have a note on my phone, I've had a note on my phone for a week to go get my glasses tightened, but they keep sliding down my nose. So you're gonna have to just put up with, with me. Anybody who wears glasses know that that, that can kind of happen over time. Um, Piet, Piet on Point was inspired by the work of Dutch painter Piet Mondrian. By rotating his work so it sat on point, it felt well with, with triangular shawl shape. It is worked modularly in three panels, which are joined with the three needle bind off. Broad borders frame the interior, just like the picture frame on a painting. The shawl is worked in garter stitch. Uh, it takes 
what does it take? Uh, about a thousand yards. I know I did not use nearly a thousand yards. I think because you have to buy full skeins of each of the colors, then it kind of gets to be that way. I have other colors in my shawl, so I'm gonna turn. So as you can see, it hangs down pretty far in the back, but I have purple and green, which you aren't seeing as much of in the front of the shawl um, with my color choices. So I think if you have a shirt or a blouse or something that you would want to wear it with, then you would want to pick your favorite colors to be forward facing, right? And then maybe put the other colors in the back. It was a very, very fun. It is really graphic and bold and I just, I love that. It's available for $6 on Ravelry. I have a small tip for you this week. I was scrolling through Instagram as I do and this popped up um, at I Thought I Knew How. And this is a chain of yarn labels that this person made with every item that they knit throughout the year. And so since we're just starting the new year, I thought, wow, a lot of people save their yarn labels and stick them in a folder. Some people throw them away. But this was her yarn label chain that she attached as she went throughout the year. And I just thought, what a neat concept, right? To just take your yarn labels for everything that you knit throughout that year and hook them together. And at the end of the year, you would have this paper chain that you could hang on your banister or something for the holidays to remind you of how much knitting you got done. You know, whether or not you have 10 or you have 100, it would just be kind of a fun thing to do. So I wanted to share that with all of you. And then as well on Instagram, I started following um, an account called The Everyday Diary. And this project examines the lives of unknown individuals through their daily diary entries. So 2023 is the 1939 diary of Leon L. Moore. So every day they post his diary entry and it's written in his scripts. You can see down there, it's written like that. So they post the picture and then in the caption underneath, they have it printed out so you can just read. And it's very short. It's just his daily life each day of what he did. And I'm just finding it really interesting. It comes up in my feed and then I go and make sure that I saw the other ones. Um, it might get repetitious or monotonous by the end of the year. Um, I don't know if, if he will do something interesting, but they're planting in there, they garden. Um, he, the, he works on a, some type of scrapbook, which I haven't quite figured out. It's, it's just been a really interesting. I thought maybe I would <clears throat> share one with you all. So this is the first entry for January 1st, 1939. Fair and cool. Well, here we are again, heard the new year ushered in at midnight with much noise, but quiet as usual this AM. Arose a little late for Sunday, but got to Sunday school about on time. Was re-elected teacher of class and M.H. Meyer's assistant teacher. The others, no change. Sermon was good, ate dinner at barracks, window shopped, and then drove to Anna's and to Netta's, wrote to the children. Yeah, I, yeah, I found it. Yeah, it's just a really nice little every day from 1939, which happens to be the year my mother was born. So I just thought, wow, even though she would have been, you know, a, ch a baby, wouldn't that be interesting for me to read through things that happened during her year? So the everyday diary on Instagram, although it might also be on a website where you could just read some of that each day if you're not on Instagram. Okay, what have I been watching? I have been knitting like a fiend, trying to finish up. I found kits <laughs> when I was tossing my stash and going through everything. I found a bunch of things that I really want to knit. I found some single skeins of yarn. I found my two oldest yarn skeins. So I'm looking for a pattern to go with those. I will be sharing that on the podcast. I found this beautiful two skeins of black yarn, but I don't have enough to make anything. It's got all kinds of color in it. Um, woven in it with um, sparkle and I love it. So I contacted a uh, yarn store out on the East Coast who looked like they might have some, but they don't have the colorways. So I'm trying to decide if I could make it in two different colorways. Um, so I'm working with that. I'm just trying to clean out some of those things that I really love that I wanna make, but I found two 
um, different kits. And so I have been knitting up, I'm gonna knit up these two kits. So I've been watching a lot of TV. I've been sitting down at eight o'clock at night and trying to knit kind of straight through till 1 a.m. And, um, and not be on my phone and not answer email and not look at my Ravelry because that's what I usually do for an hour or two. Um, and just knit, like keep my hands off all my devices. So I watched Home for Christmas, which is two seasons that someone recommended after I talked about the movie Storm for Christmas, which I really like. Home for Christmas is about a young woman who does not have a significant other and her family gathers at Christmas time and they all think she should bring a boyfriend and she doesn't have one. So uh, you follow her through this whole first season and you find out that she's had a, a breakup a while back and that that young man has moved on and she's just kind of stuck. Um, I, I really enjoyed this. It is a little um, naughty. There's a little, you know, little sex. There's a little dirty, n not much. It's definitely not like hallmarky, but it is kind of that Christmas spirit thing. Um, and then there's a whole nother season. And I really enjoyed watching. If you are looking for just two seasons of something, I think there are maybe eight episodes and there may be 40 minutes each. Um, I really enjoyed it. I thought it, I liked the, the, the girl, the main character, the woman. Um, you know, her family, the character she's involved with, her best friend, her roommate. Yeah, I really liked it. Then I watched a show called Pressure Cooker, which was a bunch of chefs that are going to cook in a kitchen and then they're going to get kicked off. But the interesting thing about this one is there are no judges. They judge one another and they have to kick one another off. And so they have to decide whether or not they're gonna be fair and upfront and honest, or if they're gonna to try to save themselves. So that was very interesting. They got challenges every week. I watched this in like two nights. It was eight episodes um, and I stayed up to see who the winner would be. Uh, but they're, you know, personalities, but it doesn't, it didn't ever get super nasty. Like, you know, hateful reality TV stuff. It, I mean, there was some, you know, there was a kind of a collaboration between these two people and the other people didn't like it, but it wasn't, it never got, you know, nasty. And then I've been watching that show that's on TV. I think it's on Tuesday nights called Name That Tune. That's really fun. I like trying to guess the songs. I am not a, a music person. I don't know a lot of music, but um, they, give a, they give a hint uh, for the title of the song before they play. And then, you know, they have to guess it. So I was watching some of that. I watch, I've been watching Cheap Old Houses, which was a season done by uh, an Instagram couple who started an Instagram account during the pandemic and grew it to like millions of followers. It's called Cheap Old Houses and they travel the country and they try to find two houses in, in these towns that are a under $150,000 and don't need foundation work like terrible you know and they go and they visit them and then they pick the one that they think is the best deal and apparently their followers are buying some of these houses so on instagram they have an account cheap old houses and they put up houses that they go to see and they bought an old house and the the wife is a restoration expert and um and he had lived in old houses his whole life so they're this young couple that bought an old house to restore and now they're helping other people restore old houses and find these really old houses. So I watched that, it was season one. Um, they, they got a TV deal and they travel in this old blue truck around the country and um, they went to Texas and Michigan and Pennsylvania. Um, and then they, they show you, they go through these houses and they kind of show you the stories of the houses and yeah. It, that was quite good. Then I watched several movies. I watched Where the Crawdads Sing, finally. It'd been on my list. I'd read the book. Um, the movie was okay. Uh, yeah, it was okay. I, you know, because you know what happens already, there's not the climax in the movie because you read the book and you already know what's gonna happen. But yeah, it was good. Um, then I watched the, the movie The Swimmers. It's about the two girls who are refugees from Syria and they're 
the one girl wants to be on the Olympic swim team and they're being bombed and um, and she wants to go to Rio, the Olympics in Rio. And so her father sends her sister and their cousin um, on a journey to try to get to Germany from Syria. And you follow them as they go through like a lot. And they try to ca cross this huge body of water. I can't remember what it is. I should know my geography isn't great, but um, and they're in this small boat with all these other refugees and the boat starts to sink and the girls have to jump into the water. Um, and um, they realize how close they were to death and they get to Germany and then they're living in these, it, it's just really fascinating how some of a, some countries treat refugees and how others treat refugees. Um, and then you follow her trying to find someone to help her continue to train to and, and she left behind her mother and her and her father and her little sister and they're worried about that and they thought once they got to Germany they'd be able to bring them over um, if they just sought refugee status and yeah it was very good highly recommend it's called the swimmers so I think it was on Netflix then I watched that new movie that's supposed to be so good called the Banshees of Inishirin you know, and it takes place on an island off the coast of Ireland where the people live there their entire lives. And so everybody knows everyone. It's about these two men who were best friends and one decides he doesn't want to be the friend of the other anymore. And it is supposed to be a comedy, but is definitely a dark comedy, which I'm not a fan of. Um, fascinating story. I know people say that it haunts you and you think about it. I have thought about it afterwards a lot. It's this relationship that um, is just broken and the men are broken and he, he just doesn't wanna be around his friend anymore. He, he's having kind of an existential crisis at the end of his life and um, he's just decided that his friend is boring and that what they do every day is the same old thing and it's boring and they go to the pub at two o'clock and then they go to the pub on the weekends and he just, decide, he just says, I don't wanna be your friend and the friend doesn't understand and and it's, there's some graphic things that happen and I don't know if I can recommend it or not. <laughs> um, go read the reviews. Um, people on the internet are kind of raving about it. It's winning awards. It won like one of those independent film awards, but um, it, it was just sad. And I watched it, but Ross wouldn't have. He would have given up. And I was so glad I didn't say, hey, let's watch this. Because he would have been like, this is not. But you follow these two men and, and they're both hurting. I don't know. And then I got a recommendation from a viewer to watch this show called Finding Joy. It's on um, several. I had to get. I had to do a seven day free trial. I'm not loving it. It's a little too quirky and lighthearted for me. Um, but there are a couple of, there are a couple of seasons, um, two, I think. Um, and I didn't stop watching it last night. So I'll have to see if I keep, if I stick with it. It's, it's kind it's, I think it's British. I'm not sure. Um, and the humor is, is like, I don't laugh at stupid humor. My husband and my daughter love, you know, kind of slapstick and I don't, I roll my eyes. So I've talked about that before. Anyway, and then I'm watching I Wednesday, which is the new sh uh, show about the Adams Family uh, daughter named Wednesday. And she goes to a, uh, she gets sent away to kind of a icky private school and um, she has some magical powers. Um, my daughter was in the Adams Family in high school in the musical, she played the grandma. And so I have kind of an affinity for that. Um, it's okay. I'm a couple episodes in. I didn't go back and watch the next one the next night. I watched something else, so I'll probably finish it, but watching a ton. And sometimes I like when people tell me what's out there to watch that's good, especially in the wintertime, right? When you're watching more TV and you're not out as, outside as much. So I thought, well, I will just share all of that. Okay, then I have... Um, what I'm working on right now. So I'm gonna show you a couple of things. Maybe that'll get some of you inspired. So I found this kit in my stash when I did, and I remember buying it. I got the whole kit from Barrett Wool, and it is to make Sven and Solvig, these dolls. And here is the picture of 
Susan B. Anderson's dolls, Sven and Solve. And I don't know why I thought I would want to knit these. I mean, I love knitting color work, but I'm, you know, I'm not super a doll fan. I think maybe now that I knit the gnomes and I, I loved that gnome pattern so much, which they're right there, my gnomes, my two gnomes, and then the two that uh, were knit for me. Um, but I had the kit, so I thought, okay, it's just gonna sit in here or you need to sell it or you need to knit it. So I cast on Sven and oh, am I having fun. I'm, I'm really having fun with Sven. Here's Sven, he doesn't have his beard yet. And um, when I got into my kit, I noticed that I didn't have the green and there was supposed to be green in the kit. So I had to write Barrett Wool and I said, I, I didn't get a skein of green. And maybe I wasn't, you know, I got blue, so maybe I wasn't supposed to get a green, but the, the kit numbers say green. And he got back to me, he didn't ask me any questions. He goes, I'll put it in the mail. So I don't know if they knew that they missed putting some greens in, or it was just me, or he was just like, well, whatever, she doesn't have green, I'll send it to you, but great customer service, right? My email was answered promptly and they're putting, it. so I had to stop working on the hat because my next color is green. And then um, I have to decide what color I'm gonna do the pants, but, um, it's all kind of knit in one piece. I will say that uh, I'm following Susan's notes. So on her blog, she has, this is how I made it a better knit because she's like the expert. And this particular pattern is a pattern book that you have to get from um, the company, Carol Anderson. And um, it came out in 1983. So this is how it's written. And it's not written as it's totally seamless and stuff, you know. Um, I, I could have followed it exactly, I'm pretty sure. This is the 10th printing that they've done. Um, but Susan had great notes. So I printed out Susan's notes and I'm following her notes for how she made the dolls kind of work for her. And it it is turning out really cute. I think my hat's gonna be a little too tall. I don't think I'm decreasing fast enough, but whatever. I'll just do some more fast decreases. But as you're knitting this hat, and now I've started Solve because I'm waiting for the green. So I thought, well, I'll just start the other one. So I got Solve going and I just put her eyes in right there. But you make their heads super tall and that's to keep the hat on and they look really dumb. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how, he looks like a cone head without his hat on. But that helps you to keep the hat on. And so you could make it shorter, but I do think that the hat would come off more easily. But then people just said, well, I just whip stitched the hat on. So it stays permanently. So that would have worked too. So it was like an inch more knitting that other people did. You do three inches. And I think most people did like two inches. Um, but his hat's supposed to come right down to the top of his eyes. And then you put his beard on, which you get as part of your kit. You get a little bag of um, fiber to make his beard with. So you get all the pieces, you get a little piece of blue string to make the eyes. Um, the nose was really fun to make. My eyes are crooked and I did them on the same row. So I'm not sure why they're, they're quite so crooked, but they don't line up. They're on the same row. So I will have to fuss with that. Who cares, right? The, once the beard gets on, it's going to make a, a total difference. So I just thought I would share that that is a kit that was out there that I have been and it's it's quite a bit of knitting I mean I, I've worked on it a number of evenings um, you know you're knitting a whole sweater and the head didn't I suppose I did the head in an evening I did the hat in probably two evenings and the sweater in two evenings so yeah I've been working on it for probably the week um, a little bit each night and now I'm just waiting for that green so I started the female and she has braids so you get yellow yarn um, to make and that's a lot of what Susan's um, blog is about is how to put the hair and the beard on so must have been a little bit of a problem so I thought well I don't usually share what I'm knitting but what the heck and then I was working on my top down cardigan so I am using up my Ella Ray chunky yarn and um, I had all these colors left and I decided to just stripe a top-down cardigan. So I'm using a um, knitting career and simple pattern for just to have some numbers. I could have figured out my own numbers, but why? I didn't want to. <laughs> and I've never designed an Erin Waite top-down cardigan. 
And so I'm just doing a random striping sequence and then I'm repeating it. So um, right now I'm getting ready to do my next plain brown stripe. I just had one skein of brown, so I just put one stripe of brown in there, which might be kind of weird. I might hate that later, but whatever. And um, this has been in a bag with two or three inches done for a year or two. And I finally decided, you know what? You need to finish this. So I've been taking this to knitting and I might now go to do the sleeves so I don't have so much um, sweater to turn back and forth. Because if I finish the sweater body, then there's so much more in your lap to turn back and forth when you're doing your sleeves. But I thought I would just share because if you have a bunch of worsted weight scraps, it can be kind of fun to just stripe and I have other colors, but I just picked the jewel tones. So I have knit this sweater in Ella Ray Chunky. I knit a red owl sweater from my friend Deb. I knit a brown owl sweater for my friend Renee. I knit a purple owl sweater for a friend who had her 80th birthday that was in our knitting group, Skip. So I had a ton of sweaters quantities. This is a discontinued yarn that I went to the yarn stores and bought all they had because I loved it. I love this yarn. It's chunky, it works up quickly, um, it's rustic. So these are all my leftovers and because I like it so much, I'm just using it up. So that's just a top-down raglan cardigan using an entire box. Let me show you. I love these orange tubs, but. <laughs> So I have, this is what I have. And I've just got them all jammed in here. I've got a lot of green and quite a bit of red and gold. And I have to decide what color bands I'm gonna do on it. So we were talking about it at knitting. Do I want it to be bright or do I want it to be dark? Do I do brown bands on the front or do I do gold or green bands? I'll need to do, um, you know, a band up the front and around the neck. So I'll have to decide what color I like. I won't do blue, because that is not my favorite color. Um, and I don't have as much of it. So I have a lot of gold, green, and red. I'll, I'll probably do the, the red, because um, I don't have a lot of sweaters that are dominant red. I have a lot of gold, orange, rust, that kind of oh. thing. Um, then the last thing I wanted to share is this little cowl. I found this skein of yarn, tossing my stash. It's beautiful. It's mountain colors, twizzle. I have one skein. I was like, what can I make? Someone at knitting said, make this. So this is called the Frost at Dawn cowl. It's just a round cowl and then you increase um, down the front. And so I thought I could coordinate it to make, um, make it work for me. So I cast on, I'm knitting in the round, you knit um, eight rows and then a purl row and then eight rows and then like three purl rows and then you go down and then you mark your center front. But I knit through the movie last night and I was just knitting away. And today when I was knitting on my way to church, um, and home, I added a stitch. There was a yarn over right here by accident and then I knit it on the next round in the dark. And so I dropped it down and now I have to figure out whether or not I can hide it because there was a hole and it's right in the center front. So I either have to make a stitch there and pick it up behind the pearl, which I think maybe I can do and, and ladder it back up and see if I can hide it or I'm gonna have to rip back what I knit at the movie because I had a yarn over in there which I never, I don't usually do that, but so I dropped it down in the car and said, okay, you gotta fix that. So during the Vikings game today, it's the playoff game this afternoon at three, I'm going to have to do that, but that's the frost at dawn. And I've been, this has been my car knitting take with, like when we went out to dinner last night and we went to the movie. Um, and if I can fix that stitch without, or I could you leave the yarn over ladder it back up and then stitch it shut with a piece of yarn, which would also have worked. I just wanted to ladder it down and see what was going on, like what happened there, why there was a hole, and there was a yarn over. If you have a hole in your knitting, it's probably a yarn over, right? <laughs> so anyway, all right, I have uh, to do the giveaways, so I'll do that next. This week's winner for the uh, mug and the stitch markers and the little, um, tiny wooden crochet hooks, which are in here. And it's that little 
that mug that I showed last week that I got um, with the funny bear on the front is going to number 44, and that's Lynn Legolas or Legally. Um, so Lynn, please send your address to me via Ravelry or Instagram, and I will get that out in the mail to you. Uh, most of you answered my question about your gift knitting and I was not making, I did not want to make anyone feel bad about not gift knitting. I was just asking, did anybody gift knit? But some of you were like, I didn't do any gift knitting this year. And I was like, oh dear, I didn't mean to, you know, it wasn't about that. I just, I needed a prompt. I wanted people to be able to respond with something instead of just like, good podcast, Corey. So you could be in the comments for the prizes. So I, that's what I did. So this week's prompt for the podcast, um, in order to be entered to win and the, the, and if you don't want this item, then, you know, don't make a comment or don't enter or put no prize. But I purchased a couple of these at the holiday because they were on clearance. And this is a double pointed needle holder or a circular needle holder because you can stick your needles in here and it would hold them for you. And I thought they were great and they were quite inexpensive. And so they zip open. You could also put pencils if you are a colored pencil person or a pen journaling person, a scrapbooking person, that kind of thing. There are four containers and I bought, I, they only came in these bright colors. Um, but yeah, I thought, well, I will share those. So I have um, a couple of these to give away on the podcast. And then I'm also including a skein of this Chunky Merino Superwash. It is Ella Ray. It's one of my favorites. And so, it, but it is not the color that is in my, you would love this for a hat. It does happen to be a superwash, but it is super soft and chunky. It would knit up in my basic beginner, beginner air and weight hat, super easy. This would make a great cable hat or cabled cowl. It's lovely. It's looking, um, it's like olive, I would say. So that is going with that as, uh, as well as some little silver stitch markers from Twice Sheared Sheep. So this is the prize for next week. And your prompt is what is your favorite snack? Because is it food or is it entertainment? <laughs> Right? I'm going to be all over that quote for the next year, trying to teach myself some, some new lessons. Um, so yeah, I will random number generator from the comments be below. I just look at how many comments there were. There were a hundred and some this time. And then I do random number and then I just counted down to 44 and it was Lynn. So Lynn, you can get in touch with me. And then last week's winner, um, Tammy has not gotten in touch with me, so I'm going to send her an, a Ravelry um, note saying, hey, you won the prize, So, because I haven't sent that one out yet. But I have a second prize. I had a podcast viewer named Anne who purchased a, a, lane, a lane book and already had one, so she has two. Maybe she even got it as a gift, but she sent this to me to give away to all of you guys. This is called Strands of Joy, 20 color work patterns for calm. Now, since this is a specific color work book and almost all sweaters, there are two accessories in here, but the rest are sweaters. You need to put book in your comment to be entered to win for this, okay? Because I don't wanna send this out to someone who doesn't knit color work or doesn't knit sweaters. The sweaters are lovely. They're beautiful. Strands of Joy. This is by Anna Johansson. It's a gorgeous book. So they're really pretty. Nothing super elaborate as far as like color work goes. Like there are not any sweaters that have like 20 colors in them. You know, most of them are two or three. Um, there is a dress. And a hat with flowers and men there are, there are men's sweaters in this um two well there's a men's specifically men's sweater and then there's a unisex um sweaters so it can go this could go also to um any of the men that are watching the podcast if you're interested in strands of joy so put in what is this what's your favorite snack if you want to win any of the stuff that I just showed. 
and then put book just at the end of your comment or whatever, put book if you're interested in the book. And then I'll do the random number generator, but I'll make sure that I pick someone who says book so that I can send this out to someone because that, and that is a lovely, lovely gift. So I want to make sure that someone gets that. Okay. Quickly, I'm going to do the audiobooks of the week and then we'll be done. Um, I'm going to start editing today. It's still hot in here. <laughs> I have the window cracked and I'm still warm. Whew, I'm getting warmer. Okay, I read a book called Last Wool and Testament by Molly McRae. I listened to book and it, it, it was lovely. I thought it was going to be dopey, right? Like some of those um, knitting themed mis murder mysteries don't have a lot of depth. They can be a little superfluous and this one didn't. The characters were well developed. The, it was fairly well written. I did not know who had, you know, what was going to happen. I, you know, it wasn't one of those ones that as soon as I got halfway through, I knew who, you know, what it was, but it's a small town, uh, a knitting shop in a town and the owner dies. Uh, the granddaughter comes back to town. Um, to settle her affairs and then they find out that something's going wrong in the town and um, and she has to stay for a little while. And she's a weaver and studies textiles because she's been, she's kind of grown up in the industry. So this is full of yarn and wool and knitting groups and spinning and fiber. And yeah, so it was lovely, highly recommend. And there are several other books out by Molly McRae that you might want to look into if you haven't heard of that series. It's not new. Um, it just finally came up in my feed. They were, this one was written in 2012, so it's 10 years old. So many of you will already probably have known of it. I had just never read it. And then last time I think, I, or time before I talked about a book called um, From the Ashes by Jesse Thistle, who is an indigenous author who grew up in extreme poverty, whose dad was kind of a junkie. His mom left them and the dad came and stole them away. And, um, and they stayed with their father for a long time. <clears throat> their mother wasn't in their life and um, they just really lived on their own. And he then he gets into drugs, but it's a total a, a redemption story of how he became, like he's a professional writer and speaker now. Um, but I hadn't finished it and Libby took it back. Do you remember me telling that, saying that? And you know, sometimes you just don't quite get done and, and you know you have a day left and you, you, I just didn't get it finished. And I thought, ah, whatever. Well, I got it back and I finished it. So I just wanted to, <clears throat> I had, I don't know, 45 minutes left, maybe more. I started back further than I needed to just to kind of finish it up. But I did go back and finish that. And then I read The Princess Trap by Talia Hibbert. And I missed talking about the last two Talia Hibbert books in the trilogy, which was Act Your Age, Eve Brown, and Take a Hint, Danny Brown. They weren't on my list. I think I talked about them, but they weren't listed. So that trilogy was excellent. It's about the three sisters. Um, they all have different things going on. So one was about autism. Um, or she's on the spectrum a little bit. One has a little compulsive disorder. Um, anyway, and I loved those. And there was some, they're definitely romance and there was some sex involved. But this one, The Princess Trap was really naughty. Like, I just don't want anybody to go into it not knowing. The, um, it's about um, a woman who... Uh, fall, uh, dates this gentleman. He, she works at a, co a company and he comes in and he falls in love with her right away. And he wants to date her and he wants to take her to lunch. And she says, okay. And he's very, very handsome. And come to find out he's a prince. And, but he's the second son. And so, and she doesn't know that. And he didn't tell her. And so then she wants to leave and he needs, he needs her. He needs him her to pretend to be his fiance for a year. So he's going to pay her, pay off all her debt um, for her to be his princess for a year. And of course they fall in love, but there is, there's quite a bit of graphic um, sexual undertones in this book. So I'm just putting that out there. Um, I did really like the story. I thought that the story was quite well done. It sounds fairy tale-ish and it, I didn't think it was, um, but he's a rogue. <laughs> He's very naughty. <laughs> um, okay, 
And then I read the, the Younger Wife by Sally Hepworth. So here's the premise. Stephen Eston is getting married again. The only problem is he's still married to his first wife, even though she's in a care facility for dementia. But he'll take care of that by divorcing her, even if his adult daughters protest. Tully and Rachel look upon Heather as nothing but an interloper. Heather is the same age as Rachel and even younger than Tully. Clearly, she, clearly she's a gold digger. Heather has secrets that she's keeping close and reasons of her own for wanting to marry Stefan. With their mother unable to speak for herself, Tully and Rachel are determined to get the truth about their family secrets. So this is one of those kind of family secrets where no one knows what's going on. Um, but I will give the caveat that there is domestic violence in that um, book, but it was mysterious and interesting. Um, I didn't love it. I wouldn't give it five stars, but it kept me... It kept me intrigued. It was it was pretty good. Um, and if you like this Sally Hepworth, she's kind of an up and coming new writer. Then I read Olga Dies Dreaming, which is like on the hot right now list um, for everyone. I think I was surprised that I got it so soon because I think it was supposed to take forever to get there. It was like a 10 week waiting list, um, but I did get it fairly quickly. So this is a new writer. Um, and she debuts with the story of a status-driven wedding planner grappling with her absent mother, her glittering career amongst New York's elite, and her Puerto Rican roots in the wake of Hurricane Maria. In 2017, Olga and her brother Pedro are bold-faced names in their hometown of New York. Uh, Pedro is a popular congressman representing their gentrifying Latinx neighborhood in Brooklyn, while Olga is the Tony-winning or Tony Wedding Planner for Manhattan's Power Brokers. So it's the story of uh, these this Puerto Rican family and what's going on. And I would highly, highly recommend, this does a lot toward um, giving you information about Puerto Rico and the uprising that was happening and the government and um, the hurricanes and how the Puerto Rican people were treated. I learned a lot. The story was engaging. It was interesting. You follow both their, um, both the brother and sister's lives. I can see why it's getting so much kind of hubbub right now. Um, so Olga Dries Dreaming by Joshidal Gonzalez. Um, very, very good. I listened to it in just a couple of days because I, I found it very interesting. Um, I hadn't done a lot of reading, um, especially by someone of Puerto Rican descent, which I think is so important that we read diverse books by diverse authors and women. Um, and so put this at the top of your list as something that you should read. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books this week because two that weren't, that weren't on the list um, and then I finished up that one. Um, so I tried to do them quickly for you. I know that doesn't always do them the best justice, but I kind of just wanted to um, talk about that a little bit. Okay, I have a little bit of a Corey Stories this week. I have been um, having some inner turmoil about, I don't want to say too much um, without being but you know, like sometimes just in your life, you have some things go on that feel hurtful to you and then you hold a grudge and then you don't say anything about it and then you stew a little bit and then you think about how you wanna treat that person and then you're, you're, you have to have a little come to Jesus moment <laughs> with maybe that person doesn't even know they hurt you and if you don't tell them, maybe you need to tell them and um, just so that all my friends know this is not one of my friends. <laughs> um, but I just, I got my feelings hurt. And I have a tender heart. And so sometimes my feelings are easily hurt because my husband can hurt my feelings. And then he'll say, Corey, I would never intentionally, and I know that about him. He doesn't have a hurtful bone in his body. I do. I can be spiteful. I can be angry. I can be bitter or mean in the moment, especially on days when I have pain and I don't feel well. But he doesn't have that, but he can still hurt my feelings. So I got my feelings hurt and I've been stewing on it. And I needed to just be like, you know what? You either have to say something and speak up and speak your piece and let the person know, or you just gotta move on, right? It is making you ugly. 
it's making you mad and bitter and you, you're wanting to hold on to that. And what does that say about you? That you want to hold on to being hurt? So I've decided that I'm going to just work on it and move on. But um, uh, and it, this wasn't anything that anyone would have done intentionally um, to hurt me. Uh, it just happened, you know, and sometimes you just get, you get, you get your heart hurt. My husband and I are headed to Arizona next Sunday. So in a week, we are going to Arizona for the week. My husband has to go for a conference for three days that his company is sponsoring. He usually doesn't do this. It does, we are not conference people that we usually go to this, but it also happens to butt up to the beginning of the Barrett Jackson car auction. So when he saw that, he was like, oh my gosh, we could go to Barrett Jackson, which I do not have any desire to, to go back to Barrett Jackson to the car auction. It'd be like taking my husband along to go to Stitches Midwest or Vogue Knitting Live, right? He would be like, this looks like the yarn in the other booth. It's just a different color. And that I would say the same thing. This looks like the car that we just saw over there, only a different color. <laughs> so I said, I, I will go, but we, you, have to, you have to find a friend because I don't wanna sit there Thursday, Friday, Saturday at the car show with you the whole time. And I know he could go alone, but it's loud, you know, they're, they're constantly auctioning off cars all day. And I remember going and sitting in the back room with my headphones on and just trying to knit and listen to a book um, in this extra area that they had where there were some cars on, you know, display, but it was just loud the whole time and lots of people and it, it wasn't fascinating to me, but I would love to go to Arizona in January, right? <laughs> So he said, okay, you're gonna have to fly down on Wednesday because I'm going down on Sunday for this conference and I'll be, be working. And I said, ah, I can go down on Sunday. He's like, well, what are you gonna do? I'm like, it doesn't, I can knit anywhere. <laughs> I can knit sitting outside. Like it's not gonna be hot, but I can sit, I can walk outside twice a day. I can get exercise, I can shop, I can go to a knitting group. I can, you know, whatever I can find. I'll find something to do. I'll go down and stay with you in your work hotel and then we'll move over to the higher end, nicer resort um, where there are hotel, uh, restaurants right on the where we stay. It's just lovely. We've stayed there before. Um, and then we'll go to the, so he, he I have a friend um, who's a knitter who I don't see all that often because she still works and travels a lot for work, but um, she and her husband are going. Her husband's very into cars. She has, she's going to go down there for work. Um, she's a medical sales um, rep person, works with doctors and hospitals. And so she can, she has a hospital down there. So she's going to go down a couple days and work. And so then she, she will kind of join up with us on Friday, but her husband's coming down on Wednesday too. And then he, he and Ross can kind of car show it. And then I'll go over for a little while, but I'm, I'm just so looking forward to some warmer weather now. Looks like it's gonna be in the 60s, which isn't warm, but it'll, for us, it'll feel lovely when it's been literally, you know, 20 degrees here for the last week until today when it finally, the sun came out and it's just shining in and it's warm. So super excited about being able to go. I have to pack my knitting project. So I have to decide if I'm going to cast on a new sweater so I can just work on one sweater the whole time and then maybe take a pair of socks or um, if I'm going to work on things that I just want to get done. But then if I finish one, then I'll have to take a second project. So I'm, I got to kind of think about that. So um, I have a couple of friends that live in Arizona, so I have to contact them um, and see if they'll be around um, that I could get together with them and have lunch. But I'm perfectly okay with kind of doing my own thing. I'll have a rental car. And although last night Ross asked me if I could help with the, they're having a cocktail hour with all the vendors and if they have to get it there, they have to go buy all the alcohol and the food and set it up in this room. And then they have to leave to go to the dinner. And he wondered if I could stand there and shoes with people. Yes. Right. Like he's the introvert. That's hard for him. I can stand around and talk to anybody, whatever. So I said, yes, I could do that. But anyway, so going to Scott's, the Scottsdale area, it's at, this is at Westworld. Um, I don't, he bought a bidder's pass, but I don't think he's looking for a car. I mean, if he saw something, maybe he, he probably could use a new project car um, to fix up. He's kind of finished his last two 
Um, he has the Trans Am that we sold, and then he's got the Corvette um, that he loves to drive. And he finished the truck, so although he's taking the carburetor off the car Corvette now in the garage, he's out there working away in our, in our heated garage because he turned the heat up so that he could be out there. So anyway, um, yeah, so I'm really looking forward to that. It feels like a real treat. I feel really, you know, blessed that I can go down with him for the extra time. We've never gone for a week. We've never done a winter vacation for a week. I mean, we've gone for three or four days, but this is going to feel like... The only concern I have is leaving Cody home. He's doing great. We haven't had any issues. Um, he and I went to the dog park twice this week, and he just loves the dog park. It just, I have to be careful when it's icy. If the snow starts to melt today, it will compact, and then if it freezes overnight, it'll get icy, and then it's hard to walk. I have boots with cleats in them, but it was not. It was um, uh, softer snow all week, and it hadn't gotten icy on top because we hadn't had, we just had regular freezing temperatures straight through the day, and so it was, I walked, and it was just lovely. I put a thing up on Instagram. Maybe I'll put this that at the end of the podcast today, just how pretty the trees. We got that. 16 inches of snow and it stayed cold and it came down so hard. I mean, sometimes it can snow for hours and it's just a light snow and it came down so hard it stuck to all the trees and then it didn't melt off them. So the trees stayed beautiful for days and days and days. So I took video walking through the woods at the dog part of, of just how pretty it was. And so I might put that in at the end of, of the podcast. Okay, I think that's all I have for all of you. I really appreciate you watching until the bitter end. <laughs> Those of you that are still here, just give yourself a little pat on the back, will you? Because I, I really do appreciate that. Those of you that stay till the, till the bitter end. Until next time, no green bananas, waddle on. You'll never regret ripping back. Keep your fork, keep it colorful buy the gravy. And what's our newest one? Grace costs you nothing. And for your hug, I love you all. I love that you're here. Um, in a couple weeks, I think I'm going to have some new content. Um, I'm working on some things, uh, kind of a surprise. So um, hang in there with me through this little transition time and uh, I'll see you in two weeks. Bye. Oh, I haven't done this for a while. We got all that new snow, so I have to wait for the dog park trails to get groomed. But look at this. I mean, it's like winter wonderland. It's just gorgeous. Hey, bud. Yeah. It's 19 degrees, so the snow is a little crunchy, but not bad. A little noisy. I can't hold it very still, but thought you might enjoy peeking at the sun just starting to go down there between the trees. It's just lovely. So thankful. Whoops, big hole. <laughs> I don't Sorry. know if I can catch the light. Oh, the shadows. It's so gorgeous. It's just, it's just beautiful. It's the best piece of property in the Twin Cities, I think. There he comes, the happy boy. Still doing And the lake, all frozen over.